I'm going to start with this as shaping the surface. I have this shape and I picked a brush that I think could work inside this circle. Uh, over here, if you see it's moving, is a black shape and a tan shape. So this is the tan shape, this is the black shape. And I'm showing you two different ways of the shading, starting with that and starting with this. This is better in a way. So uh, to get the right size shape of the brush that fits this circle, you want if you want to get to know exactly what size that shape is, you use the control, click this, and you have it selected. I'll just unmove that so it's now I'm hitting control and I click on this layer now it's selected so it's selecting that shape now I go to the file uh, copy that and then new this says it's 528 pixels so what size I need to brush to match this says this is 674 so the new one says 528 I'll just copy that and then change this brush size to that so there's the size and then I this is the size that it is. So now I'm going to just pick this color, which is the same color it's here, and paint right in the middle. I'll just move it around a little bit. Well, maybe that edit, undo brush, remove that selection, go up here to this layer. Now we can paint. I got it at 13% flow. It's, it, it depends on how fast your video rate is to see this actually work. So that your number might change to get the same thing. But I'm just going to move around on here. I don't see anything happening. It's barely showing, but I see something there. So I'm going to go up. 37. And... Now I see it's starting to get better. I'm going up 70%. Now it's starting to get better. I'm going up. Wait a minute. I see the problem. This opacity is down to 10%. So I guess I'll undo everything. opacity threw me off I usually keep it at 100% so it don't do that so that just kind of screws it up oops and Okay, got it at 16%. Now, it should make a big difference. Okay, now I have like a ball shape. See? So, if I have it dark, I paint in the center. But if I have it light, I have to paint on the outside. So, I have to make it darker on the outside. So, I had to go like this. And then make a smaller brush to go around the outside to make it look a little more curved. And then if it's too much, then I pick up the color again and go in the middle. Then that's too much because it's too much of a flow. It 
it happened far too fast and passed way out, past where I wanted to be. So I'll set it down low, like 3%. Now I can make a small change. Now this and that looks kind of the same. Except this needs to have darker areas around it because as it curves, it gets darker. I mean, it gets black. As it curves, it gets darker around the edges. So what I'm actually doing is sort of like if I do one slope, gradual from one side to the other like uh, let me do a new shape yeah same shape dang on there yeah, there's a block and i'm gonna shade one side sort of like i can do it like this And then see now it's like a sloped angle. So if I wanted to make it like a wall, then I'd shade one side on a slope. So I make this brush big enough to go all the way. And that's too much there, like this. See the center. Other brush. This block. See, the center of the brush is here on the crosshairs. So, if I go like this, it's going to have more shade in the center than it is on the outside. So, it's like a gradual slope. That's a gradual slope. And this from here to there that gradually gets lighter it's just a little blurry because the flow is low and then when you want it to that to be a, just an angle that's how it works is light to low but if you want to add a curve to it then you keep going smaller and add more of a curve to it so like the back is getting darker and just the smaller area is getting darker in the back and just the smaller area is getting darker in the back and just the smaller area is getting darker in the back. So it goes gradually, it, it's on a curve, this is on a curve. So it, eh. it starts here where it's gradually getting darker, but as it goes back farther, it gets darker and even darker to where it's in a, a curve type shape. Like it's a curve and not just a gradual blend flat. It's a, it takes a curve to go deeper and darker as it goes back. So you see it, it's not like gradual blend from one to the other. This is gradual blend to here, then to here, it's getting darker and to here it gets darker. So it's a curve. That's how you do it. shade a curve. Otherwise, you're just shading uh, just a, a flat shape. So when you want to make a ball, you need that, that curve where it's like this is in the middle and then there's darker around the edges. And you can get that quicker by starting with a black shape and then painting in some color. Or you can go this way to do it 
and it has a little bit different results and it's always messier because you got all this paint around the outside so this makes it quicker and easier you have less trimming to do so you start dark and then start filling in with light that's the quickest way and this way is like if you want to control how it's shaped then you control everything the levels the flatness you can make it a 45 degree angle going back instead of a curve so you can shape it any way you want while this shape is curved okay so now that we got this shape we can add details in the shape I'm gonna make this bigger So now let's say I want to push this uh, push in a crater make this a moon and push in a crater so I get a breath brush which I have it's not showing because I can't do a crater there I need to do it on the new layer I'm going to do it on new layers so then the moon isn't affected by it so now I have this this like this so I'm putting in a sink but if you think of the crater the impact of the crater blasts stuff around the edges so it needs to be raised up first so we'll take the brush and use a lighter color so we go around like this bring out the color a little bit make it a light spot Okay, there's a raised up dimple or pimple on the moon. It's like a pimple. It's raised up. Now we want to make it darker. And don't want it to be as big so then we don't ruin what we just put in. So we want to make the center part darker. And if we want to do a little bit like around the rim of it make it darker we can just get a smaller brush and go around it so we're like doing a volcano type look here and add more details to the sides of it to make it smaller or sharper around the edges we just go around it So we're trying to keep this all one color, but we can change that. So I'm going to try to keep it round though. There. It's a little bit rough. Anyway, so I'm going to go with a, a color that's lighter, and I'm going to go with a, a sharper brush. and bring up the center like this now we're raising it up in the middle and we can go up to a lighter color And that gives us a, like a, a dimple with the thing coming out of the middle. So we want to shade it with that shaded color to go back down a little bit. Okay, this will sink it back down a little bit. So there it is. And then pick up the color in the middle here. Try to use that to mix it in. So now we got like a flat surface in there where all the dirt fell in. And we have all this raised up rim, which we can raise up more. 
then make it textured around the rim. The little higher spots in it. Just scribble in little higher spots. So it looks rough. And I don't know if you can see it because of the shade. But I'll just get a bigger brush. And add more details in it. Like this. And so that's like a, a crater. Then we can take some of this and blend it in. Make the ground go towards it like a blast. It's like if something explodes, the dirt, everything goes out. And then, because it the needs balance, it has a back blast that comes back in. That's like a crater on moon. This is just a, a 3D version to shape this. It's not anything to do with lighting. Now, if we want to do lighting, add lighting, I'm going to lock this layer here or actually I'll just select this layer so then I can paint on another surface on another layer and add lighting some lighting anyway so I'll add lighting now from right now I'm thinking that let's hit this this with the sunlight I use white this right here I want the sunlight to hit to spot and that means that there's colors in the moon that might be bolder because of the sunlight makes the colors stand out brighter And then add the color around the rim. And then on the other side, there's shadows. So this is all in a shade. I think I'll do it more flow than three because it gets the job done better. You know, now we have this side's in the dark. So if we have a black background, it feel well. I can see some parts around this is from this. So I guess. If I want to get rid of some of that, I can invert it and erase it because just selecting it here doesn't select all the pixels as there's less pixels in the shade that gets selected. Sort of like at 50%, it picks up the 50%, but at like 17% filled pixels, they don't get picked up in the selection as easy. So at a certain point, it says it didn't pick up nothing. So I'm going to use your eraser and select inverse and erase some of this. Oops. Did it undo eraser? Erase it from here. And we can just select it again. Then we can get more of it selected. 
It looks like I'm racing some of the moon. Wait a minute. Edit. I did. Bam. Step back. Step back. Select inverse. There. Now we're back to selecting outside of it. There. So we can see that this moon is dark on the back side. That's where it's not getting their light. Like this part of the moon is getting light. And then there's like a, a half tone color. It's getting a little bit of light there. But there's a shadow here. And this is just texture of the moon. So this right here, now you get a shadow casted in it around the rim here. Uh, that's right here. So I'll do this for lighting. It gets the shadow here. It fades by the distance of the shadow, but it'll be mostly shadow. I'll have to do a lower flow and a bigger brush to do that. See, right there, I was just going over too much. And I'll just try to add a little bit there so it's kind of showing that and then use the eraser right here a little bit and then go back to adding more details to this shadow I got a 24% go with lower that's lighter that's because I was still using eraser. Undo eraser. Use brush. And lower the brush size. So this area in here would be darkest. So I'm going to pick up some color right here. And blend in. So that this gets a gradual blend. Now I need highlights. Like here, and here, and here would be like highlights, and I get smaller brush. Do some of these inside ones, just be getting highlights, but not as much. So this is like a crater on the moon. So I'm shaping this. And then, then I'll need to show shadows from these craters sticking up. So edit, undo. Go with a lower flow brush. Try with something bigger first to get some of the darker areas. So I'm adding darkness around here. Because the sunlight here is here, and the shadows go this way off of it. Then I need a, a wide brush with a low flow right here for that gradual curve in here. So there, that's like getting that curve in there. So 
they were shaping the surface just by using lights and darks. And then we add lighting and put in shadows and this shadow areas would be totally dark. Nothing showing there. Well, these ridges go with a sm smaller brush. These ridges right here, they would be sticking up a little bit. So that would make that rough. Then you got the inside here. Might show some light in here around the rim. But down in here, the sunlight would be blocked. So it's just light from the glow. Sort of like the, when the sun hits this spot right here, this makes it glow. You can see the moon is glowing bright enough to shed light on Earth while it's in the dark. So it's like a big glow right there. Then you can see I was trying to get that colors in there. That leaves a little bit of the the colors around this rim right here. This, around this light, there's a little bit of color here. Oh, this middle area right here is brighter. And if we want to put textures in it, and we still can put textures in, but Right now we're doing the lighting and not the textures. So we'd have to create the texture and the lighting both at the same time, which it's easier to just create the texture, then add the lighting. Because you can see here, this is the shape. This is the way the surface is shaped. And we added that dip, dip part there. And then we added lighting. See, use that shape to create that lighting. And we use, set the lighting to top left front. Sort of like mostly top left, but a little bit towards the front. That way we can see more of the front here so that's how to shape texture well shape surfaces and when you this right here i'm going to use a selector tool and unselect it okay so this area right here is like a, a tent. A tent is where you add where the everything is wider. Like there's a, a solid orange here. I want to start a new layer. Say this is a solid orange. Okay. And I'll lock that. Now, if I add white to it to make it pale, that is the tint. It right here is a tint of the orange. It goes all the way up to a brighter color. Now if I use a black to go to a darker color, this is a shade. 
So we're using shades and tints to actually shape the surface. So this looks um, this looks darker and this looks lighter, but it also this looks deeper and this looks closer. So we're setting the height by shade. This is dark, this is light. This is up front, this is back behind. It curves away. And adding more darkness to the edge makes it curve away even more. So now you have more of a curve. So that's how you shape things. And if you want to add something to come out, bring this area right here in the middle out, just in a small area, like a raised up spot. Then you add a highlight, this like a light color. This brings this color here forwards. And if you blend in this color here, it helps it get that look where it's getting brighter. It's, but right here, it looks like it's, uh, this is darker. You can see it's darker. So you have to fill in with some lighter color because this is a gradual area. And it's getting lighter. So in order to make it look right, you have to fill in that so it's lighter. Then you want to make it darker go deeper right here then you just add in darkness and that makes this a spot where it's deeper like this right here is a rim and this is a rim and this is deeper right here So this is deep and this is sticking up. So we can take this, eh. we can take this and put a light rim around it and it look like this is high here and this is low here. Like a raised up spot like a nose, like in see image, let's see. Edit, transform, flip vertical. Okay, like this is a nose. And this is under the nose, starting the mouth hole. And then you want like a little place for the upper lip. So you have this white area for the nose sticking out. And this upper lip and the mouth hole. So that's it's just basic shapes is by brights, darks to give you the shape like this. This has the shape. It's not about lighting. This is about shape of the surface. And this is shape of the surface. It looks like it's kind of like, to my eyes, it looks like it's got streaks like this. Probably because of my eyes are being tired, but it's shaded smoothly. But it looks like it's that way in areas. Anyway, that's the shape. And this is the lighting added to it. You can't have this lighting unless you know what the shape is so you know where to put these shadows by where the light is like this is deeper here this is lighter 
here, so it's up higher. And this creates the lighting for it. I guess that's enough for now.